You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Highness the Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabra Al Sabah, marking the success of the surgery that First Deputy Prime Minister, Defense Minister Sheikh Nasser Sabah Al Ahmed Al Sabah has undergone recently. His Majesty the King wished the Emir of Kuwait abundant health and happiness and extended congratulations to the First Deputy Prime Minister on the success of the surgery, wishing him a speedy recovery. His Royal Highness uh, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a congratulatory cable to the first Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense of the State of Kuwait, Sheikh Nasser Sabah Al Ahmed Al Sabah. His Royal Highness the Premier extended his sincere congratulations on the occasion of Sheikh Nasser's successful surgery. His Royal Highness wished Sheikh Nasser Al Sabah a speedy recovery and prayed to the Almighty to bless him with abundant health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also wished the brotherly state of Kuwait continuous growth and prosperity under the leadership of its Emir, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr al -Sabah. During the first meeting of the Joint Governmental Parliamentary Committee to discuss the retirement laws, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the Royal Directive to re-examine the retirement laws, affirming the need to reach a consensus that ensures the sustainability of retirement and insurance funds and preserves the rights of pensioners and participants. His Royal Highness outlined the vision, methodology and mechanism that the government aspires to achieve in cooperation with the representatives and insurer councils to achieve the public interest. The meeting was attended by the Representative Council Speaker Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah and the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh. During the meeting, a number of views and visions that will be the main aspects of the committee's work were reviewed to rebalance the retirement funds. His Rohanis affirmed the need to speed up creating executive programs that ensure the implementation of the Royal Directives on Retirement, hailing the constructive cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities and the gains achieved for the country and citizens as a result. His Rohanis stressed the need for the work of the Governmental Parliamentary Committee to stem from the principle of preserving the rights of pensioners. He added that the government has chosen transparency and candor as a principle in addressing the retirement fund topic and was keen on taking into consideration the citizens' views through the Representative Council. His Rohan has stated his keenness on attending the meeting for its importance as it concerns a large segment of citizens. The Prime Minister directed the President and members of the governmental team to cooperate with the representatives of the Legislative Authority to deal with them transparently and to inform them about the current status of the funds to reach consensual formulas and sustainable solutions. The Legislative Authority's delegation expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his directives on amending the retirement laws and on forming a governmental team to discuss the laws with the Legislative Authority. The Representative Council Speaker expressed thanks for the government's cooperation and His Royal Highness's directives to establish this cooperation and develop it. He also thanked His Royal Highness for the invitation to the meeting, which embodies the principle of partnership that His Royal Highness is keen on instilling in the national decision. The Shura Council Chairman expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his keenness on reaching dynamic and consensual solutions on the retirement topic, expressing appreciation for the cooperation His Royal Highness directs to ministers to maintain with the Legislative Authority. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Glebia Palace the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps and Ambassador of, the Kuwait, of Kuwait to Bahrain, Sheikh Azam Barak Al Sabah. The Premier noted the continuous development of the deep rooted historic relations between Bahrain and Kuwait at all levels. He highlighted the Kingdom's keenness to further develop bilateral cooperation. For his part, Ambassador Al Sabah expressed pride in the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the Bahraini Kuwaiti relations.
His Royal the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a congratulatory cable to the First Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense of the State of Kuwait, Sheikh Nasser Sabah Al Ahmed Al Sabah. His Royal expressed his sincere congratulations to Sheikh Nasser on the success of his recent surgery and prayed to the Almighty to bless him with abundant health and a speedy recovery and the State of Kuwait for the progress and development under the leadership of its Emir, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. His Majesty, the King's Representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa asserted that Bahrain started implementing its strategy to activate sports professionalism that will pave the way to develop the sporting movement in the kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Nasser noted that the kingdom has started taking its first steps in sports professionalism through His Majesty, the King's grant to Samuel Haddad, the first passport to be given to a citizen with professional athlete as an official profession. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also praised the support of His Majesty the King to the Kingdom's strategy in activating sports professionalism in Bahrain due to His Majesty the King's belief in the importance of professionalism and its outstanding effects on sports in the Kingdom. Sheikh Nasser also affirmed that Samil Haddad is the first athlete to be granted with professional athlete and the door is open for more athletes. His Highness Sheikh Nasser has announced on his personal account on Instagram that granting Al Haddad the first passport to be given to a citizen with professional athlete as an official profession. Sheikh Nasser also posted on his account photos of Al Haddad new passport identifying him as a professional bodybuilder. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa deputized the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa to attend the ninth graduation ceremony of 129 students of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, the RCSI, which is the Medical University of Bahrain, held today in the presence of a number of ministers, officials and parents. On this occasion, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa conveyed the greetings of His Royal Highness the Premier to the graduates and their families and his wishes of further success and achievements. Sheikh Ali Al Khalifa affirmed that the government led by His Royal Highness is keen on developing Bahraini medical cadres for them to perform their noble duty. Sheikh Ali noted the cooperation with well-established international universities and colleges including the RCSI is at the top of the government's plans to develop the medical and health sectors in the kingdom which contributed to realizing the current advanced levels of the national cadres. He noted the development of the health sector in the kingdom in terms of the number of hospitals and health centers and the level of its human resources who match their global counterparts in experience and knowledge. He commended the role of the RCSI in supporting the health sector by training medical and nursing competencies according to the highest standards. Sheikh Ali congratulated the students and their families, wishing them success in their personal and professional lives. The ceremony commenced with a recitation of verses from the Holy Quran. Then the president of the RCSI, Kenneth Mealy, awarded the graduates their certificates. He delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for patronizing the ceremony. The Chancellor of the National University of Ireland, Dr. Morris Manning, also delivered a speech thanking His Royal Highness the Premier for his patronage. He also expressed thanks to the Deputy Prime Minister for deputizing His Royal Highness. He expressed his aspiration for further development and expansion of the educational opportunities provided by this educational edifice in the coming years. He also noted that the partnership in the field of higher education between the two countries through the Bahrain's Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland is an excellent example of cooperation and mutual benefit.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF deputized the BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, to attend the graduating ceremony of the 10th Joint Command and Staff Session graduation ceremony in the presence of the Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, at the Royal College of Command, Staff, and National Defense. Upon arrival, the Commander-in-Chief was received by the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma, the Acting Chief of Staff, Major General Abdullah Hassan Al Naimi, and a number of BDF senior officials. The BDF Commander-in-Chief anthem was played. The ceremony began with a recitation of verses from the Holy Quran. Then Major General Abdullah Al Naimi delivered a speech on the occasion. Sayyidi Sahib Al Maali Al Mushir Al Ruk. الشيخ خليفة بن أحمد آل خليفة القائد العام لقوة دفاع البحرين أصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعادة أيها الأخوة الأفاضل إنه يوم مبارك من أيام قوة دفاع البحرين أن نشهد ثمرة جديدة من ثمار العلم ماثلة أمامنا في هذه النخبة الطيبة من القيادات العسكرية الواعدة القادرة بإذن الله تعالى على حمل راية التطوير والتحديث في مؤسساتنا العسكرية ويسعدني أن أشاطركم فرحة أخرجكم وأهنئكم على إتمامكم بنجاح كافة متطلبات درجة الماجستير في العلوم العسكرية والذي جاء تتويجا للجهود الطيبة التي بذلتموها أثناء تحصيلكم العلمي في دورة كلية القيادة والأركان المشتركة العاشرة بالكلية الملكية للقيادة والأركان والدفاع الوطني كما يسرني الترحيب بإخواننا الأعزاء من القوات المسلحة بالدول الشقيقة الذين يشاركون إخوانهم في هذه الدورة ليتبادلوا معهم الخبرات والمعرفة راجين لهم التوفيق والسداد إخواني الضباط إن اجتيازكم لهذه الدورة حقق لكم أرضية طيبة للانطلاق مستقبلا نحو دورات أكثر تقدما وصار لكم عونا قويا لتحمل عباء المسؤوليات والمهام التي ستسند إليكم في حياتكم العسكرية المقبلة حيث أن طبيعة المهام والواجبات التي ستواجهونها خلال المرحلة القادمة ستكون على نطاق أكبر ومستوى أعلى مما يتجلى عندها أهمية التعليم والتدريب العسكري وحتمية استمراريته لما له من دور عظيم في فتح آفاق العلوم والمعارض وإثراء الخبرات وصقلها وتطويرها لاستيعاب كل ما هو جديد وحديث في مجال العلوم العسكرية المتقدمة ومسايرة إيقاع العصر ومتطلباته وهنا أتوجه بالشكر إلى هيئة التوجيه بالكلية الذين أسهموا بجهودهم المخلصة ومساعيهم الخيرة في نجاح هذه الدورة راجيا من الله أن يوفقهم في تحقيق الأهداف البنشودة أصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعادة بالإرادة والعمل حققنا إنجازات غير بسبوقة في شأن التدريب الذاتي المشترك وقد تمكنت دولنا الشقيقة بفضل الله وتوفيقه ثم بصدق التوجهات الحكيمة لأصحاب الجلالة والسمو قادتنا حفظهم الله من قطع أشواط بعيدة المدى في مجال التنسيق والتعاون العسكري والدفاعي مع الأشقاء والأصدقاء والحلفاء وذلك انطلاقا من اليقين الثابت بأهمية هذا التعاون الذي لا قناعا لشعوبنا ودولنا فنحن نعيش في منطقة حساسة استراتيجيا واقتصاديا لدول العالم أجمع أصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعادة أن الدفاع عن الدين والذود عن أمن واستقرار الوطن مسؤولية عظيمة وأن المحافظة على هذه الأمانة يتطلب منا جهدا مضاعفا ومزيدا من التفاني والبذل والأخلاص في العمل وإتقانه نسأل الله العظيم أن يحفظ جنودنا البواصل فوق كل أرض وتحت كل سماء وأن يثبت أقدامهم ويسدد رميهم وينصرهم فإنه نعم المولى ونعم النصير وسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ها نحن في هذا اليوم المبارك 
Then the commandant of the Royal Command Staff and National Defence College, Rear Admiral Abdullah Saeed al-Mansouri, delivered a speech following, followed by that, an officer gave a speech on behalf of the graduates and then a speech by the graduates from brotherly countries was delivered. وتوجيهات مباشرة لدن سيدي صاحب المعالي المشير الركن الشيخ خليفة بن أحمد آل خليفة القائد العام لقوة دفاع البحرين رئيس المجلس الأعلى للكلية حفظه الله لم يكن هذا الجهد ليكن إلا بدعم صادق من قيادة واعدة وأمينة على مقدرات الوطن وحسب خطط مدروسة في زيادة العدد وتزامن مع تطوير التعليم في شتى المجالات a poem was then recited by participants from brotherly countries. <laughs> مليكنا اللي عز داره مراد رعايته تشريف يا سيد الأسياء كنه ملبسنا عليها إقلادة رعايته تشريف يا سيد الأسياء كنه ملبسنا عليها إقلادة خطوة لها معنى ومقصود وابعاد يبي من الحصن الحصين اجتهاده ويلا يالله يا منزل كتابك للعباد الواحدة اللي كل أبونا عبادة تحفظ حمد اللي بنا صرح الأمجاد القائد الأعلى مغر السيادة وانطق بشعري فرايد تطرب أسماع الحضور وافتخر أني أمامك سيدي دام الكلام ترجم إحساس تجلى داخلي بصدق شعور Then the Commander-in-Chief awarded certificates and awards to the graduates and the top achievers in which a number of officers of the armed forces of brotherly countries participated from the United Arab Emirates, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Jordan, Egypt and Yemen. He congratulated them and wished them success. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa conveyed the greetings and congratulations of His Majesty the King, affirming that the Royal College of Command, Staff and National Defense receives the support of His Majesty and has become an important military educational landmark in the Kingdom. He affirmed that the Royal College offers all its capabilities to provide the highest level of military qualifications to graduates academically and military qualified commanders and officers. He also hailed the role of the college in preparing future leaders. At the end of the ceremony, the commander-in-chief congratulated the graduates and expressed thanks and appreciation to all the Royal College staff, wishing them further success.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the Chairman of the Saudi Commission of Tourism and National Heritage, the SCTH, and President of the Supreme Supervisory Committee, Souq Uqad, His Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, in the presence of His Royal Highness Prince Badr bin Abdul Muhsin bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. The Foreign Affairs Minister expressed the Kingdom's pride in the brotherly and historic relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia in various fields, hailing the leading strategic role of Saudi Arabia in the regional and international levels, wishing Saudi Arabia further advancement and prosperity. His Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Salman held a lunch banquet for the senior guests participating in the 12th session inauguration of Souq Akab in Al-Tayyif, Saudi Arabia. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the ninth graduation ceremony of 83 nursing and postgraduate students from the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, the RCSI, the Medical University of Bahrain, where His Royal Highness the Prime Minister deputized the Minister of Health, Faiqa bin Saeed Al Saleh, to attend. The students pledged to provide support to patients and to perform the noble mission. The Minister congratulated the Prime Minister on this occasion and conveyed His Royal Highness's congratulations and wishes of success to the graduates. She praised the patronage of His Royal Highness, which reflects his support of the Educational and Health March in the Kingdom and his keenness for Bahrainis to receive excellent medical and health education. The minister affirmed the government's interest in the health sector within its strategy to develop Bahraini medical cadres and qualify them for education and training according to the latest international methods. She congratulated the graduates and wished them success. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed bin Ibrahim al Mullah, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, marking the conclusion of the fourth session of the fourth legislative term. Al Mullah took pride in the unlimited royal support for the representatives and shore councils and His Majesty's directives that are for the best interests of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its people. Al Mullah also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, paying tribute to His Royal Highness's directives for enhancing a constructive cooperation with the legislative body with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown. Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Speaker also extended his thanks and appreciation for the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh and the Council's members, in addition to Minister of Shura and Representative Council Affairs Mr. Ghanem bin Fadl Al Bu'ainain, who provided support to legislative and government joint action. Al Mullah also praised the sincere efforts, noble services, and keenness of the members of the Parliament in supporting parliamentary, legislative, and supervisory work in Bahrain, in addition to their cooperation and the adoption of many national legislations in various fields to achieve the goals of comprehensive development. He affirmed that the national action in the Representative Council was done for the sake of the Kingdom under the One Family in accordance with the constitutional and civilizational practices which reflect the democratic, consistent and steady approach under the reform led by His Majesty the King. Al Mullah meanwhile expressed his sincere thanks to the General Secretary to the Council under the chairmanship of Mr. Abdullah bin Khalif al Dosari for their support and services for parliamentary work throughout the legislative term. Al Mullah also praised the prominent and responsible role of the media and newspapers in supporting the Council and their coverage of the work of the Council and all citizens for their national contribution in supporting the parliamentary work and the reform project. Finally, he stressed that the work and achievement are continuous in the Kingdom of Bahrain, adding that the current challenges and developments necessitate greater cohesion, national unity and support for the democratic process and the promotion of national political participation in the coming stage. Upon the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the government's parliamentary committee to re-study retirement laws while ensuring consensus between the executive and legislative branches, the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, ordered that the formation of the government's parliamentary committee consists of four representative council members led by the first Deputy Speaker of the Council, MP Ali Al Aradi, and the membership of the head of the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee, MP Majid Al Majid, head of the Financial and Economic Committee, MP Abdurrahman Bu Ali, and head of the Services Committee, MP Abbas Al Madhi. Al Mullah noted the importance of intensifying efforts and prioritizing the issues of retirement according to the royal directives through cooperation and coordination between the representatives and shura councils to achieve the public interests of subscribers and pensioners and ensure the sustainability of pension funds. He noted the legislative authority's keenness on achieving the aspirations of the citizens under the prosperous heir of His Majesty the King. Al Mullah expressed confidence on the legislative and executive authority's ability to overcome all challenges and achieve consensus among all parties. 
In accordance with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to form a parliamentary committee to re-examine the retirement laws and given the issues of retirement priority in the efforts of reaching consensus between the executive and legislative authorities, Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh sent a letter to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa on selecting the members of the Shura Council who will represent the Council in the parliamentary committee charged with the following up on this issue. The Shura representatives are the first Vice Chairman of the Shura Council, Jamal Mohamed Fakhro, the Chairperson of the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee, Dalal Jassim Zayed, the Chairman of the Committee of Financial and Economic Affairs, Khalid Hussain Al Masqati, the Head of the Services Committee, Dr. Jihad Abdullah Al Fadl. The Minister of Finance, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, has confirmed that Bahrain, in collaboration with its brotherly neighbors, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Kuwait, is set to announce a new program designed to strengthen Bahrain's fiscal stability. Sheikh Ahmed expressed gratitude for the continued support of Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Kuwait, noting that such initiatives represent the strength of long standing ties between Bahrain and all three countries, which are underpinned by a shared commitment to achieve strategic goals and interests. Now, the Parliamentary Division's delegation concluded its participation in the Standing Committee on Economic Affairs and Sustainable Development of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly, which was held in Cyprus. The delegation affirmed the importance of joint parliamentary work and its role in consolidating cooperation and coordination between Asian countries. Joining us from the Cypriot city of Limassol is the Representative Council and Delegation Member, MP Mohamed Al Amadi. Mr. Al Amadi, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you very much and good evening to all of you. Good evening. Mr. Ahmadi, can you brief us about the results and decisions made by the committee? Yes, uh, the delegation has participated in the standing committee on economic and sustainable development in the Asian Parliamentary Assembly, which held in the Cyprus city of Limassol. Um, uh, the committee is have agenda of six resolution that resolution has been set up uh, previously in the plenary sessions before and those resolution was submitted by the member delegation of the assembly and we discussed last today and yesterday those six uh, resolution and adopt them for the next plenary will, which will be held on november in uh, turkey the first resolution is the draft resolution on Asian integrity, integral energy market. And the second resolution is the resolution on environmental issues. And the third resolution is on financial affairs, ensuring efforts for economic growth. The fourth one is resolution on poverty, eradication. And the fifth resolution is on the role of ABA parliament and supporting the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals of the UN. And the last one is resolution on water and, and sanitation in Asia for all. Those uh, resolutions have been adopted today after a long discussion between all the members. Representative Council Member and Member of the Participating Delegation, Mr. Mohamed Al-Amadi, thank you so much for joining us.